to actually start changing people's behavior because you're limited as to how much you can change your behavior at any point in time. If you own one of those Mustangs, you're buying gasoline until you sell it. You know, now you can drive less, and people do. So it does take a while to have consequence, and I doubt that two years is likely to have much difference on, on anybody's behavior because we've seen that kind of fluctuation in prices of fuel, and it does ultimately change behavior, but only when people are aware of or perceive it to be a permanent change in condition. And then it, it can have a consequence, and we've seen that in a number of jurisdictions where it starts to have consequence. One of the difficulties in studying this is the lags are such that it is very difficult to tie the consequence with the policy introduction. So you introduce a tax today, and people come back in six months and say nothing's changed. Well, be patient, folks. You know, it's going to take a while, right? And then, uh, uh, so you do need to give it time to work. But there is evidence that it is working where it has been seriously introduced. Can I add we'll to that? We'll take the last two questions here and there, and then we'll have to be out of this room. So we only have it until four. Okay, uh, so you had a question. Yes, so yeah. has there been any study into how much the reduced demand, a carbon tax in Canada, would create for savings and not creating extra production in China? Because I know the emissions that are for uh, shipping products overseas basically aren't counted towards any country. So uh, how much study has been done into saying, okay, now it costs more to buy this product in Canada that we're only getting for that price because we're causing it to be made in China, who happens to have the most coal production. So what effect, like, are, are we maybe underselling how much a carbon tax actually uh, reduces pollution globally if we have one in Canada because we're actually very much a global consumer? There is a lot of difficulty in trying to, and, and this has come up over and over again in the discussion, the difficulty is that we have a global problem and we have regional governments. So it's very difficult to implement policies on a regional basis that work on a global problem. There's a little bit of a leap of faith here that at the same time, it can only be done by each regional government taking action. So inaction gets you nowhere, even though action doesn't guarantee a result for exactly the reasons that you suggested. So one of the things that we talked about a little bit is the problem you've alluded to here, the embedded carbon problem. If we make it impossible to produce things in Saskatchewan, but just buy them where they're produced somewhere else, and it may be even higher emissions rate, what if we accomplished from a global warming perspective? We have to. We have to, at some point, say, we're going to have to deal with that some other way. And the, the, the one good thing is that more and more regions are adopting carbon pricing, so more and more regions have that cost in their goods. Uh, and a, there's a paper I can send you that, that looks at, you can, you can look at right now what Canadians' responsibility for greenhouse gas emissions is when you look at the products we buy versus the emissions that just come out within our borders. Uh, and it's actually, it used to be that we had more coming out from within our borders than when we pulled in. As of you know, 2006, it flipped because we're buying so much from China. There's actually more embedded in the products we're buying than, are, than is embedded here. And does that even include the shipping? That doesn't even include the shipping. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so in one last question, Miss Lady. Not sustainable and are happy to do so. 